everyone, Mo Weenie, and welcome back to another episode of Fish Perspective, where we'll be taking another look at life. And today with me, a very special guest and friend, Leanka Furi, or as I like to call her, Leanka Fauri. Um, Leanka, welcome. Thank you for being on our little show that Hello. goes on. Thank Hello. you. <laughs> <laughs> it goes out to millions and millions of people around the world and um, gets listened to by tens of people. Okay, okay, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I like to start the, the uh, session with a very uh, easy question. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of the way that uh, you introduce yourself as well. So what is it that you do, Bianca? <laughs> I am a play therapist. So I literally studied seven years to teach how to play, to learn how to play. <laughs> I love it. And is that specifically for kids? Yes. Okay. So I do play therapy. It's usually for children between the ages of three and 18 of years. Um, but the theory that we use in play therapy is called gestalt therapy. And you can actually... It's almost more like a life philosophy um, and a mindset. Um, so you can actually use the principles they off on any age. So yeah, it's, it's actually more a way of living than it is a way of therapy, I want to say. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm very curious now. So, so what do you mean by it's a way of, of thinking or a way of living? Or so, maybe... Maybe you can say, explain to us what Gestalt is in a few sentences. I like the word Gestalt. What do you do? I do Gestalt play therapy. Gestalt is a you know a Dutch word. Um, it is. It means that the the part of the whole is more. Yeah, the parts of the whole is more than the whole itself. So a person, you're not just Francois the Imago therapist and relationship specialist. You are a father, you are a brother, you are a son. There's the different parts of you that makes up the whole. So when we, when we approach life, we should think about all our different sides and selves to be present within it. And um, so Gestalt is, is a lot about being present in the moment. And because we believe that the power lies in the present, you can only change if you're really um, present in the moment. That's where the power is. So, and it's a lot about taking responsibility for your own life and your own emotions. So, yeah, Gestalt is about being yourself, being in the moment, being present. Um, and we can't, like, within play therapy, it will entail that a child comes to you with a problem and you can't change the circumstances of the child, but you can work with the emotions the child is feeling now. Um, you can't reverse trauma that happened, but you can work with the results of that trauma in the present moment. And you can try to strengthen the child to go back into the same circumstances, but with a, a self that is strengthened. So the child is more equipped to actually deal with what's happening in their lives. Oh, wow. I've got many questions already. So <laughs> how do you define being present? And, and maybe linked to that in the whole Gestalt mindset is um, being present and being yourself. What does that mean? Uh, being present starts with awareness. Awareness of your... Awareness. Self. Awareness. <laughs> and awareness... The, the way to open the door to awareness, emotional awareness, and what's happening around you, how you're feeling, um, is through the senses. So sensory work is actually the first step of emotional work and of to, to become aware. So um, you will a, a typical Gestalt approach would be to say, close your eyes, become aware of your breathing, your, how your heart is pounding, um, if you are sitting, become aware of where your body touches the chair. Um, so to use your senses to open the door to emotions. In the brain, the, sensor, the sensory part of your brain sits next to the emotions. So we use senses to open up emotions. So in therapy, we will, we will do smarties work to say, 
Okay, if you choose, close your eyes and pick a color smarty with your eyes closed. Oh, it's the blue one. Tell me, what is your, what is the, the color blue reminds you of? The ocean. Oh, how does it, how do you feel when you see the ocean? Can you smell the ocean? Is the ocean hot or cold? And then what does that remind you of? So through the senses, you open up the emotions and then the emotions flow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so cool and, and, and interesting. So in, in, in the light of that, what does it then mean to be yourself? So being present means really connecting to the present moment through the senses, but also then connecting to the emotions, either from the past or related to the past or the present through that sensory experience. Yes. Did I get all of that? Okay. Yes, cool. that's right. Uh, what does it mean to be yourself then? To be yourself is to accept yourself with all your parts. <laughs> so um, it is about taking responsibility for what has happened in your life, for your own feelings, for your own actions, um, and actually to say, I can't maybe change the things that happened to my life, but I, I do have power. The, the power is in the presence. I do have the power to choose how I'm going to react on it, how I'm going to deal with this. Um, yeah, so it's actually about taking responsibility and then a, a very easy or basic way to start doing that is to use I language mm. and to think like using I sentences instead of saying you are making me mad. It's like I feel mad when that happens. Okay, so that's a basic principle of taking responsibility, being present, yeah, and being aware of your own self and your whole self. So, so the whole self, being yourself, means taking responsibility for all the different parts in your life. So, would be would another way be to to say that you you take responsibility for all the different roles you play for different people in your life? Definitely. Okay. You, yeah, so you are more than just one self. We always have a core self that is like, in all the selves, there will be a fundamental Francois. That is, that is the stuff about you that just makes you unique in who you are. But you are different as a parent as you are as a relationship specialist. Yes. Like, I, I maybe studied seven years to play but when I'm a mother and I'm in my mother role I totally forget what what's the right thing to do how to stay calm <laughs> when your child is pushing your buttons or you know so usually my husband will ask what do we do now when when Elizabeth does this what do we do now and I'm like I don't know I really don't know <laughs> <laughs> so, I but it, I, yeah. yeah but I'm aware that my mother's self is not as good to, to react oh. in the correct way um, like my therapist self will do and will know. So I'm aware of that and, and it's okay. Sometimes we should just say it's okay <laughs> to be like, I like that. that a lot. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, Leonke, because we're not, when, when you work with, with other children, you're not as emotionally invested. So it's easier for you to be present and, and remember what the right thing or the right way is to approach something and not allow your emotions to interfere, but with your own children. And in my case, children and my wife being a relationship specialist, as you call it. I like that. I'm going to use it. Relationship specialist. Okay. <laughs> um, it's harder because you're emotionally invested. Um, so the perspective you have is kind of cluttered within that, within that context. Okay. And it's okay. very easy to desensitize ourselves at work than it is to not feel the yeah, to actually not feel emotions at home. We we do feel a lot of feelings at home. <laughs> yes, because we, uh, I'm guessing, um, I'd like to hear your, your view on it. We've got more expectations at home. Definitely. And things in return. Yeah, they say being a parent is nothing else than managing your own anxieties. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anxieties usually appears when there's expectations not being made. So it's exactly what you're saying. 
Okay, cool. Okay, but how do you help kids that's so small? So you said from, from age three to yes. 18. Wow. Yes. How do you help small kids to realize I need to take responsibility? How does that work? Sure. I, I first want to say that I love working with children. I think it's a lot less complicated than adults. I, yeah. I does feel that include teenagers? Oh, teenagers is my favorite. They, yeah. they say it. it is. They yeah. don't like people to be fake and they can smell fakeness from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> so the conversation is actually quicker, to be honest, to, and right to the point. And to, yeah, so I go with a very... Right, sorry, I interrupted you. So firstly, talk to me about young kids. How do you do that? And then let's talk about teenagers. Okay, so if a child is really, really young, you, you work with the emotions. You're not going to make them understand why they are doing what they are doing. So we work with the emotions and we try to teach them how to handle and manage their emotions. So it's okay to feel all of the emotions. We accept all feelings, but we limit actions. So it is, it is not about um, just being permissive permissive about feelings but not there's no consequence for you you may be angry but it's what we do when we are angry that makes it acceptable or not so the very small kids we handle the emotions and teach them how to manage their emotions so what can you give us an example yes so um i think a lot of three to six year olds um the parents phone me and say, my child is out of control. She's so angry. She hurts other kids, you know. Um, and my, my kid has anger issues. Okay, so then the child comes to me and we see, we will do, we will use emoji stickers and see how the child's heart is feeling and what, and what is making you feel that way. How do you, you know, where does the anger sit, sit in your body? Very gestalt, where does it sit in your yes. body? That's the sensory that, part. Yes. If the anger can talk, what will it say? And then you actually realize, oh, because with anger, there's always, a, anger is a secondary emotion. There's always another feeling hiding behind it. So the child will say, the anger will say, I hate my baby sister. Mm. And then we can say, it sounds as, as if your baby sister is making your life a bit challenging, accepting the feeling. Yes. And then yes, she always get the attention from mommy. Mm. <gasps> Oh, so now since your baby sister is here, oh, you have less time with mommy. What do you usually do when you get angry? Oh, I hit things. And then we will say, what else can we rather do when we feel angry? Let's think of ideas. Mm -hmm. And then we can make a, a, a cool down jar with ideas of uh, alternatives to handling or managing anger. Rather throw balloons or... Get a, a punching pillow, that's your anger, angry pillow that you are allowed to punch. You get the idea. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so as an option, so maybe if it's like a violent reaction, um, which maybe sounds a bit strong to use yeah. with kids, but like it's a physical uh, action. Hmm. Do you like suggest something like that? So instead of punching your sister, your baby sister, punch, punch the pillow. Or do you, yeah. do you say, let's move even... Let's even move away from that. Is that not a good option? Um, so we will say that there's, there's anger rules. We are allowed to feel angry, but we are not allowed to punch something or someone. We are not allowed to break anything, not allowed to say bad words. Let's see what we can rather do. That's healthy ways of, of handling anger. When we feel the anger is, is in our hearts or in our tummy or wherever they said anger is within their body, what else can we do? Um, but what you're saying is we want to even try to prevent the anger from, no, no, from, being, from becoming yeah, an right. outburst. And that is what, when we, when we do parental guidelines, when we give parental guidelines, we will try to help the parents to diffuse the emotions even before it results into a tantrum or into an anger outburst. But that is, that's for the parents to do and to learn. So they get a lot of homework from my side to do. <laughs> okay, great. And I'm guessing they're quite thankful because they, they, know, they know what to do. 
Sorry. I, I'm guessing that that makes them actually grateful because then they know what to do. Yes. Find you, they're like, I don't know what to do. It's that typical. Don't mind the homework. <laughs> yeah, it's that typical thing of why don't we get a, a manual when we get the baby? Yes. So yes. just like your child doesn't know how to anger, uh, how to handle anger, they're not born with it. You as a parent don't know how to teach them how to manage their anger. So within the playroom, I try to diffuse the child's feelings, teach them responsibility to become aware of it. But then the other part of my job as a play therapist is to help with parental guidelines on how the parent can go home and diffuse the anger and teach your child the emotional vocabulary as well. And yeah, for them to be present as parents, to become aware of their own feelings, but the yes. child's feelings, yeah, it's all about being aware. So the, the, so the parents also get equipped in understanding. Exactly. Their own, uh, that's, that's awesome. Because that's, um, in my work as a relationship specialist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a big, it's a big part of the process is understanding what am I feeling? What's, what's this emotion called? Because like okay. you said, beneath the, the anger, there's other emotions. That's actually the real emotion that, that, that we need to get to um, so we can express that. Exactly. Okay. Now let's talk about teenagers. I also love working with teenagers. Okay. So teenagers, so as the child grows up and as they get older, you will include more responsibility work within the play therapy. Yes. Okay. So... I think um, teenagers are so awesome to work with because they are so honest. And the thing, another thing with Gashold is um, when there's unfinished business, we need to have dialogue. And that's where your work uh, correlates with mine. We need yes. dialogue to close unfinished business. Yes. Okay, so typically a teenager will come to me, and I think you can agree, their biggest issue in life is that they don't feel being heard. Yes. So they don't feel that their feelings are being acknowledged and they are not, they don't have parents that make them feel that they are listened to and being understood. Because yes. being a teenager is complicated. I mean, I think I see children between the ages of 10 and 12, I see often because they are pre tween we call them tweens. Yes. The preteens, the woman already, the hormones already start here yeah, to confuse the child and to bring up emotions. And then being a teenager is full blown hormones and emotional roller coasters and stuff. Yeah. So Puberty being a teenager is difficult. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then um, your parent, your parent or parents maybe don't realize that they need to shift their parenting style from parenting to more you actually told me this i just want to sorry. say this yeah sorry the, i was in one of your um webinars. sorry lianca the line cut out there can you just repeat from from parenting to okay so i i actually interfered interfered myself okay. i actually learned this from from one of your workshops ah, okay you you taught me that a parenting style should shift from parenting to mentoring to to a, a more friendship type yes. of relationship after that sounds brilliant tell me more <laughs> okay. so uh, parents also um needs to become aware that they can't uh, handle their teenager the same way that they handle them as children uh, because then they then yeah then they are not going to get to the real problem. They they are just going to want to handle the perceived problem that can be tantrums and anger, shut doors being shut or whatever. But they don't they don't connect with the teenager. And when a teenager don't doesn't feel connected, they won't share. So um, we really need to connect before we can correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with the teenager we will diffuse the emotions 
we will do um, a typical activity of putting your parent in an empty chair, having dialogue with your parent to just let the emotions flow, maybe to close the circle because a child and a teenager, when they feel like they've handled something and it's finished, they can actually be finished with it. While adults say, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, but I'm not actually okay. Yes. So, so then it, we can maybe close the unfinished business cycle through dialogue in the playroom. Um, and then we will also try to teach them, okay, how can we res be responsible with our own emotions? If something like this happens again, what can you do? How can you approach your parent? Teach communication skills to be able to share your feelings within a safe way without feeling guilty about it or without making it about the person um, directly. Yeah, so making it safe to communicate. Yeah, that's 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 awesome stuff, Leonka. And what, what fascinates me about about working with teenagers in, in that way is uh, the example you sh you shared as well. The empty chair dialogue, talking to your parents even though they're not there can actually close that that loop. Yes, it can definitely. So um, something that you also taught me, Francois. <laughs> and I stop that. <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> See, it helps to go for therapy to be a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but something you you um taught me in imago therapy is to start with an appreci appreciation and then to link the appreciation with an emotion to go into the opposite emotion um and then to try to resolve that so i'm going to use that in an example hello dad i like it when you spend time with me it makes me feel special a time that you don't make me feel special is when you are working all the time um, and you're not spending time with me. That makes me feel like I'm not important. I need you to um, spend more time with me or um, take me on a date during the weekend um, and, and I need you to not ignore me when I speak. So I will, I will facilitate the process of this dialogue within the session. And we, we like using a plastic inflatable called Bob to make it more real <laughs> for them to, to be able to or draw a picture of your parent and put it on the chair. Because remember, we are using the senses to open up the emotions. Yeah. That's so cool. I've never tried that. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. I'll, I'll use that. Very cool. And I, I think your wife is really good with sensory work putting it, expressing you know, the sensory on paper or through yes. a meeting. My wife, my wife, for those of you who don't know, my wife is an artist and brilliant. She's amazing. She's an amazing artist. Amazing <laughs> artist. Um, and do you sometimes get the parents in to actually have the dialogue or do you feel like that's not necessary when you're working with teens because they are able to close that loop in that way? Ooh. That depends on the child's temperament. Okay. Some okay. teenagers would not feel safe getting the parent in, getting the parent in. Um, so some of them, I would, I would ask them, do you feel like this is something you would like to do in real life? Um, is it something that we should try with daddy or mommy inside the room? Or do, do you feel more comfortable for it to be just in, in the empty chair? Or would you rather write a letter to them and do that? Or I will just refer them rather to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Leonka. <laughs> yeah. I think you should, I think the emotions can be so sensitive. It's you should be cautious not for it to explode. And I think you are very good with diffusing that emotions with with both parties involved. Thank you once again, Leonka. <laughs> <laughs> I really um uh, I'll. I'll um, do the EFT as we discussed. <laughs> I claim back for medical aid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask you what, because I see as a really um, caring and connecting and brilliant person. 
Um, that's why I love chatting to you and connecting oh, with you. Thank you. you. Why, you're welcome. Now, your turn for the EFT, right? Um, Bring it on. That's why I wanted to chat to you on, on, on fresh perspective because I think you do have a fresh perspective. Um, how, how do you feel like your work changes or have changed you? Sure. Yeah, I started with a very easy question and now we go into the deep side. <laughs> oh, you're throwing me in there. And I'm someone that needs to think about what I'm, what I'm thinking about. <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. How has my work changed me? I've come to realize that we are all just, we are only human, like that song. Yeah. We are only human, we make mistakes, we, we are going to hurt each other. Um, but, and that it is okay as long as we want to grow from it and as long as we are um, learning from it. So to embrace life, um, as it throws you some curveballs, um, to acknowledge all feelings, accept all feelings, and then to try to just be yourself within your feelings and the circumstances that you are in, mm -hmm. and then to try to really grow from it and say, okay, how can I, how can I use this to grow within myself, but also to help other people? So to build empathy, because I think when we care more about ourselves and more about each other, that's ultimately how we're going to change the world, you know? Yes. yes. Um, and I think people are stuck in ways that they don't, really don't know how to change and they really don't know how to accept negative feelings and the feelings of negative feelings of others and how to manage that. I mean, when your child is being defiant, it's, it's a struggle for a parent to overcome that feelings because you as a parent also feel then rejected by being a parent <laughs> so it that it it's made me more aware of that we are only human that we life is going to throw you curveballs negative feelings and it's okay that we can actually use this to care more for ourselves and for each other yeah sure that makes sense um and you did well you didn't even uh, prepare for that question you haven't prepared for any of the questions so you've been no. doing well all along. I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but what uh, if I can link to to what you shared now is for me working with people and the way it changed and keeps on changing me is is it links so much to what you were saying is realizing that we can't be perfect Mm -mm. knowing knowing a lot of stuff and understanding how it works doesn't mean we will perfectly implement it and that's exactly. something that i really have to uh keep on embracing and understand because i want to do the things i know yeah. but um the way i i especially in terms of parenting and and in my marriage i just see it as when i know better i do better so when I realized, oh, I, I didn't actually implement something that I already know or I missed something out here, I, when I know that, I try and do better. That's, that's the best we can do. And that's exactly one of the things that I try to teach parents as well. When your child feels good, your child is going to act good. A child that doesn't feel good doesn't act good. So... We can't expect our, ch our children to behave better if they don't feel better. Yeah. And how are we going to get them to feel better? We need to accept their feelings. We need to say it's all, it's all feelings are okay to feel and while we limit actions um, to still be the parent. But uh, as parents, we tend to just want our children to stop. Stop feeling yeah. negative feelings. Don't, don't do that. That's not necessary. It's nothing to cry about. Stop it. Yeah. Um, and then we, we tend to throw out more commands and threats. And, you know, a very spirited child will see that as a challenge and, and want to challenge the challenge. So <laughs> then we don't connect at all. Yeah. And if we don't connect within the relationship, there's not going to be growth or 
um, yeah, we're not going to feel better. So we're not going to behave better. So then we're just stuck. Yes. Yes. Okay, Elanka, I've got one more question. I know you have to go and uh, to play. <laughs> to play. <laughs> I need to go play. <laughs> yes. Um, what do you feel is like your superpower that you have to give to the world? So uh, usually I, I call it the fresh perspective. What's your fresh perspective or fresh take on the world? But um, Nicoline, my wife, told me I should rather ask people what, what, what their superpower is that you feel wow. you give that you have. You know what? I think um, this is something that maybe was spoken over me since I was a little child. So it's, it is um, something that I've maybe grown into or maybe it was a temperament trait that was seen by me from a very young age, but I would say it's joy. So <laughs> to try to be joyful and luckily joyful can um, manifest, manifest in being playful. Yes. <laughs> so just maybe to be joyful in, yeah, to, to share joy, to share, that's my way of sharing the love. And, you know, to, you can have joy in difficult circumstances as well. And I think as a therapist, I want to teach children that to be joyful is more, than a, is more a choice than it is a result of something. Because the children I see, um, the children I see is very broken. Children, I mean, we are all broken, as we have said before. But to be joyful is to choose, despite of all the things that happen in my life, I still can take responsibility for my own emotions and own actions and be joyful still in my core self, in my, in my, in my self. So that, I would love that to be my superpower, joy, spread it joy. Is. Leanka, I've known you for uh, many years now, and that is definitely, when you said it, I was like, yes, it's true. Oh, that is thank superpower. you. I'm very grateful <laughs> to know you, and I'm very grateful that you agreed to share your insights and your passion on oh, um, my little podcast. It was so nice. It was so nice being here. I feel very privileged. Thank you everyone for listening and tuning in and remember if you change your perspective you can transform your life. Bye Leonka. Bye.